Oh boy, he's got his lift. Yeah. <laughs> so that's not great. I don't have the gearhead height lift. No. Here. And I was wrong. How are you feeling now that he's done everything <laughs> wrong and roasted your car? <laughs> Hello and welcome to Gearhead 704. I'm Matt and we are finally back at Fox Resto. I know it's been a minute, guys. As you can see, all the cars out here, they are set up for second Saturday swap. They do those every second Saturday, right? And so they have a swap meet here as well as a car show. But anyway, today, as you saw in the thumbnail and title, we're doing another everything wrong with my my Fox body video, but this one's kind of cool because actually a subscriber of the channel found out about Fox Resto from the videos, went and bought a car, and she's here today, and that's Victoria. So I'm gonna introduce you to her. Let's go ahead though, get inside the shop, take a look what we got. Matt's already gotten started. He's got the car actually up on the lift. There's Nemesis, pay no attention to that. More coming soon. But yeah, there's the car on the lift, and I already like the license plate. So anyway, let's go ahead and get into it. All right, guys, here is the car, and it's a 93 feature car, I believe, but I got the owner here as well. Victoria, welcome to the channel. Hey, Matt, it's good to be here. Good, are you pretty excited about this car you just got? I'm extremely excited. Yeah. How long have you had it? I forgot to ask. A little over a month, maybe two okay. months at this point. Okay, and it's, so it's a 93 feature car, and I heard, you we were kind of talking earlier today, guys, you love Mustangs? I love Mustangs. You're always giving your husband a hard time about Mustangs. I'm I'm always giving my husband a hard time about this Yeah, yeah, so you're great people to be around and he just picked up another Fox body too. He did. It's he another white one, did. so stay tuned to the channel for that. Maybe we'll have that one coming, but uh, yeah, so today what we're gonna do, Matt's gonna go over everything on the car with you, kind of point out what he sees problems with and he's gonna roast it a little bit, you know? But that's okay, because you okay. wanna know, right? It's okay, I wanna know and I want the car to be perfect and great. Awesome, awesome. All right, well, I'm very excited you're here and we'll bring in, what are we calling you now? What are we calling you back there behind the scenes? Doc Fox? You haven't told me what you're calling I think, me yet. I think uh, my buddy Harris said that we should call him Doc Fox because Dr. Fox body was taken. So come on in here, Matt. Let's start looking at this thing. So you've already, one thing, Matt, is you've already done a full inspection on your own. I went ahead and went through it. It's actually going to be more thorough inspection than we've ever done on the channel. Oh, cool. Yeah. Yeah, actually, too, I want to mention this. You said this is a service you can start doing, so if someone's interested in purchasing a car, yes. and they're local, they can bring the car here and you'll do that before purchase, right? Right, this inspection is initially meant for a pre-purchase, so if you're looking to buy a Fox and you wanna know what's wrong with it before you buy it, as long as you can get the current owner out here, I will do a full inspection on it and tell you everything that I find wrong with the car, and it's, you're gonna see it's pretty detailed. Okay, yeah, yep. well we know that, definitely long time viewers of the channel, but yeah, let's go ahead, start getting into it, and guys, I'm gonna try not getting in the way too much, point the camera in the right spot, but I'm gonna let Matt Tell Victoria what's going on, we'll go from there. So there's something wrong with your top frame to where it's binding right there, to where if you push it right past that little kink, it'll go. Mm -hmm. I think it's over here because you look when the top's down. If you look at this right here, you see this bow, how these are nice and level yeah. these, between these two halves? Look right here. Uh, this one's got a sag. It's sagging right here, Matt? Yeah, so you can see, if you look at those two, it's nice and level yeah. or almost like arched up a little bit. This one sags down between these two. So it should be like that. It may just be an adjustment because this top was replaced. It may be a pivot that's worn out. Uh, okay. So that's something that I would need to get more into to diagnose it. Yeah, I forgot to mention this, guys. It's about 100,000 miles on this car, and it's all pretty much original. It is an original feature car, so, you know, all this white trim was from Ford, from the factory. And so on the interior, you know, obviously you got a few little things, the speaker grills. Overall, though, this interior is beautiful. You know, it's, it looks like it's had a carpet put in it, which mm -hmm. would be typical. Um, said the seats are reupholstered, right? The seats are reupholstered, yeah. The back is original. Back original. It's had the okay. coin tray replaced with the cup holder, coin Oh today. yeah, there you go. Otherwise it looks pretty good. You got a few little issues like your armrest pad here is blown out a little bit. Aesthetic issues. All your switches work, but they're you know they're rubbed clean. Mm -hmm. You got sagging. These mount door pockets. panels look pretty good. Yeah, absolutely. There you go, it's a dinger. Yeah. So you got your sagging mat pockets. Your shifter bezel is broken, and the shift boot has broken away from the bezel. It is a five-speed, which is awesome. I guess all the summer editions were that, weren't they? No, there's some autos? They're not. Okay. It's my understanding that this vehicle yeah. is one of 444. Oh, okay. Because it does have the five-speed. Hey, that's awesome. They made 1,500 white, triple white okay. feature cars in 93, and 444 of them had Look at, five speed. Look at Victoria, no other stats. <laughs> I like that, I like that. <laughs> it's 93, so it's got a factory headliner, which is only 93 cars. Oh, I need you one of those, one Matt. Of I need, I need, we're going to do one on the channel. We've got to do that. Man. Yeah, let's roll the convertible in here. Anyway, sorry. Your, your car, <laughs> not my car. Go ahead. Check this so. out. Their latch actually works, so we can do this without oh, everything wow. pulling out the back. <laughs> that doesn't happen on mine either. Man, Matt, you make me look bad here. <laughs> we already got a rip seal. This is a brand new thing. What happens oh, is the emergency happen. brake cable is attached on this side of the e-brake lever. What has happened is the pivot on this handle has worn out. Watch. Mm. 
that is supposed to be right here. And what happens when it's worn out like that, you still have tension from the cable and then it just ends up immediately cutting that. You mm -hmm. see it's taken a chunk or two out of yeah. the plastic right there already. Just that fast, yeah. 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 Again, don't look at mine, Victoria, because it's really bad. <laughs> Basically, all four windows have this problem. See that it goes all the way up and yeah. down like that? It shouldn't. Quarter windows are supposed to have a rock back and forth about like that. Mm -hmm. That's correct. This is not. All four windows do have that issue. But that's guide rod bushings. Again, if we're gonna go in and do one of those things, we usually recommend doing everything. The glass mounts, the bushings, the window motor, just take care of it all at once because sure enough, you go in and do only do half of it. Next month or six months <laughs> down the line, you're gonna need to do the rest. Go ahead and roll it up. And when it gets to the top, it's gonna move forward. You see oh, that right forward, there? Yeah. So the reason it does that is so it can come in contact with the door glass. You don't want it sliding up like that. So you want to move up and right towards the end, it moves the glass forward. What happens is there's a rubber stopper in there. Yours are blown out. And when that happens, it comes forward too far. You are missing those components. So your quarter windows right now without those components could never be adjusted correctly. So they just need a lot of attention. They look like they're working right, but yeah. they're so far out of adjustment. That's why it leaks water. And I believe you did right. say it's leaking water. Oh, yeah. So oh really? Absolutely. A lot? Yeah, yeah. A okay. lot. Okay. I was soaked, yes. yeah. Oh wow. I guess yeah. mine's not that bad then, Matt. <laughs> right. I've only got a little wet. So. <laughs> yeah, it pours in from a lot of places. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> the other issue is if you look, all your weather stripping does look to be original. Like you got bubbling, you see that bubbling right there? That's rust from the inside steel liner that is rusting and it's just basically mm. gonna end up pushing through the rubber. Being that this is kind of set in this condition, starting to rip, these are not doing their jobs yeah. at all. And they're not made to keep the water out of the car 100%, mm -hmm. just most of it. Door locks work great though. <laughs> Hey, he said something worked great. Right. <laughs> I can lock it. <laughs> All right. Of course, it's a convertible, so people can still break <laughs> so in. It doesn't really matter. <laughs> Your latch and pin guides, that one's really there bad. If you see right there where that little hook grabs chunk that's flooded, oh, yeah. Yeah. that's a little receptacle to catch the J hook to hold the top down. Isn't that basically what holds it down? Like on both yeah. sides? So when that, that goes, it, it flies up, right? It does. Yeah. And you could bend the frame if only one gives. So I don't know if you've tried to open these top latches. Oh, They're very, yeah. very stiff. Oh, I can't do them by myself. There is a lot that's of corrosion in here. The top latches need to be replaced. Okay. It's so bad that you're gonna, they're gonna stick, you're gonna force it and something's gonna break. You know, definitely recommend you replacing. Oh boy, he's got his list. Yeah. <laughs> when your husband saw that listed, he's like, oh my goodness. <laughs> <Can't> <laughs> <Okay. believe. Yeah. laughs> and that's why he's not here right now. <laughs> so now we are gonna go ahead and move to the fun stuff. We're gonna do some mechanical stuff now. All right. The part that might really make me cry. Yeah. <laughs> the first thing we're looking at is the battery cables. You got the typical where somebody's cut off on an original battery cable, cut off the end and did one of these clamp on battery cables. These are not meant to be permanent replacements because of the way this is done, how that cable is just crimped in there, it very quickly corrodes. It's best for your charging system, for being able to start the car every time. It's very critical to have good battery cables. We need a full tune up and we know that because it looks like the plugs may have been replaced, My but we did them um, a couple weeks ago. Okay. Oh really? Yep, okay, cool. All the plugs. Gotcha. All the wires. These are original 1993 date coded wires. Yeah. So they've been on since the factory from 93. <laughs> Do those. Do the cap and rotor. Hey, original. you can see that right there. 1993. Your brake fluid here. See that's nice and black. I was going to say, it's probably gel. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of contaminants yeah. in there. I do recommend a full brake flush. You yeah. have other things wrong with your brakes, so we'll talk about those here in a little while but while we're up here that fluid should be mostly clear or like a slight amber color power steering fluid it is supposed to be red not black this is an indication that something is wrong inside the pump mm -hmm. but man i thought for these cars ford made it white no no <laughs> <laughs> not on that one okay that would have been cool if they could have done that i would normally recommend a power steering flush on this since it's so black and we also have other components wrong in the system which i'll talk about that when we get under the car uh, this is something that's probably to clean this up we're going to have to replace all the components replace the pump yeah yeah because it's just like anything that's uh, hydraulically ran if it's got contaminants in here, it's contaminated everything that it's running through. Here's your PCV system. That's for your PCV valve back here. There's a grommet and a valve. I know you can't see this, but if you wanted to feel back here and feel it, like you can, but there's a, there's a hose attached to the PCV valve and it goes into a grommet. It's supposed to fit very tightly into that grommet. So, you know, if you give it full throttle, it doesn't blow the valve out. 
very typical. This is probably the original one. The rubber has shrank. The PC valve just falls in and out. That thing right that there, there? Uh -huh. if you grab it, pull it in and up, it'll just slide oh, in and out. I feel it. That's yeah. supposed, supposed to be, be a tight, tight fit. Yeah. Yeah. You should be able to pull it out, but with a good amount of resistance. Right, no, All it's right. pretty loose. You have one other vacuum leak. I got this cap on here. I've got a machine that I hook up to this hose. I plug off this and I fill the whole engine up with smoke. Okay. And then I can see where there's any leaks. Right. But this is the first time I've seen this one. This idle air control motor, this is partially what controls the idle. Okay. The gasket where these two bolts, there's actually a little mm -hmm. blowout in that gasket oh, right really? there. Wow. Yeah. yeah, you don't see so, that. Right. I, I bet that IEC's never been pulled then. It hasn't. It's actually still got <laughs> wow. the original. Look, it's still got the original engineering number sticker. <laughs> And that's I don't a control that hasn't been pulled. Yeah, wow. that's, that's, the that's pretty cool. The F2 stands for 92, so this okay. was made in 92 for the 93s. Wow. wow. Um, it's only like 28 years old, man, I mean. Something like that. Maybe get a couple more months Maybe out 29. Of it, right? <laughs> we got a couple of cracks in the fan. Oh, right? yeah. A couple cracks there in the fan. Yeah, yeah I can right see it right there. there. So. Another one right there. This one's obviously bad because it has no resistance. Even if it did have resistance, I would feel the front of the clutch to see if there's any oil coming out. And if there's oil coming out, that clutch is on its way out. Look on this radiator right here. Mm -hmm. You see that green yeah. stuff? That's corrosion mm -hmm. from that radiator leaking. If you come around here and look. Oh yeah, I see the oh, green there. Yeah. You see where that's oh, yeah. like that? Oh, there you go, now I can see it. Yeah, look at that, guys. So that's gotta be a radiator replacement, I would say. Yes, think. it is. And yeah. this is the original radiator from the car, it looks like. Yeah. Okay. It's got the Vallejo with the engineering number. So it's definitely time for it to be replaced. Your charging system's not working. These cars can work correctly with the stock alternator. You're gonna get almost what? everybody. What? Yeah. No one believes that, Matt. <laughs> You're gonna get almost everybody that's like, oh, this is never enough for the car. Mm -hmm. Well, Ford wouldn't have engineered it that way. These cars will catch fire from these plugs right here. And anytime you get an alternator, they usually come with a replacement plug because these have been known to burn mm -hmm. down cars, okay. okay? What causes that is everything else in the system being a little bit worn. Mm -hmm. Altogether, it could de demand 10, 20, 30, 40% more than what the air alternator is capable of. And when that happens, that's when your voltage starts tanking. We definitely want to get this charging system fixed. Not only that, the alternator wasn't clocked right when it was put on. Okay. It actually has three different positions that you can put the back housing on. Mm -hmm. This plug should be down here. And there's another plug that's buried under here that should, should be, be right, right here. Fortunately, we drove it home 500 miles from where we purchased it. Oh, really? Okay. So it, and it sat for 10 years? It had sat for... What made it? Yeah, that was my biggest concern was getting home, but now, yes. We wow, 500 mile trip for the well. She didn't let me down. There you go. <laughs> you made it to Doc Fox in yeah. time. So. That's a good start, right? <laughs> this has underdrive pulley kit on it. Be part of the reason why the alternator is so weak and an idle because it, what it does is it makes the crank pulley smaller, which mm -hmm. allows everything to turn a little bit slower. At an idle, the alternator may not spin fast enough. Somebody did this to it. Yes, yeah. this was after market. This was done after the car was done. So the one place, nothing else, but that was done. Right, exactly. It was a common, it was a common mod for more power, <laughs> which was. even those guys anymore, ever, no one likes those anymore. Even the performance guys, just so right. you know. Really not gonna get much added horsepower. You can do a lot more, especially for a street car. You can do a lot more that's gonna get you power than you know, killing your speed on your alternator and your power steering yep. and your AC and your water right. pump. Because don't forget, that belt affects everything that spins on the front of this motor. All right, cool. Now we're ready to go up. Guys, car is up in the air now. It's time to get a little bit underneath Victoria's <laughs> convertible. Have you seen this view before of the car? I have not. All right. Other than laying on the ground and looking Well, this at. is nice for so most people. Much, much it doesn't better. work as well for me, but you know, you should be fine. <laughs> That's fine. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah. I don't have the gearhead height lift. No. <laughs> We know that the shocks and suspension's bad. These are OEM. You can actually see that yellow mark there is a factory inspection mark. Okay. All right, plus the factory ones are gonna be like this solid black plastic little shield on it. Okay. I did uh, notice the quad shocks are there at least, which is cool. Yeah. I mean, I'll probably have to be replaced, I'm sure. Yeah, I would recommend replacing those too. Springs are original, and just like we discussed, springs are actually recommended about every 60,000 miles because they do wear out just like anything else. And they think about it, they're holding the entire weight of the car. Uh, so they do fatigue over time. Uh, the exhaust, you know you need exhaust. Uh, it does yeah. look like these are some good old original, probably 40 series Flowmasters yeah. that we had talked about. Got a little bit of a problem right here. Right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, you got the original 4CAT H-pipe. It's up to you if you want to keep it or not. Uh, nowadays, they don't even sell off-road H-pipes or X-pipes. 
So either way you're looking at it, you're probably buying another one of cats. I do think the high flow cats makes it a little louder, performing a little better. The rear end, you don't seem to have any excessive play in the rear end. It was better when the tires were on there, but it will eventually need to be rebuilt, even if it's just the, the clutches wearing out. If you get into the point of doing the clutches, honestly, it's just best to do the whole thing and get all new bearings and everything. This is not anything I'm gonna say that you need to do right now. Oh yeah, okay. check out this hole right here. Wow, I didn't even <laughs> yeah. see that one. Yeah, that's a good one there. I'm pretty sure this is the original transmission. You got a little little seepage here and there's a bushing in here that wears out yours isn't too bad mm -hmm. see how i can rock that up and down a little Just bit a little. Mm -hmm. there's a bushing in there that does wear out when it completely wears out it's going to leak really bad and actually will eat up this little shaft right here you see all that oil oh, wow. all over that, yeah, that. Uh -huh. so that speed sensor is leaking oil okay. so we need to do the sensor and also the electrical plug that plugs into it is oil soaked and if you see this right here mm -hmm. that's the insulator that goes into the end of that plug it's okay. rubber it's so oil soaked it's swollen and it's pushed out they thought that the clutch may have been replaced if it was replaced it was replaced some time ago or if it was replaced the throw out bearing wasn't replaced either way the throw out bearing looks to be original or at least high mileage the clutch pedal, whenever we push the clutch pedal, it kind of gets like a jumpy. It's like a little jumpy, right? I think that may be that either the throw out bearings worn out is not lubricated or the throw out bearing retainer is worn. Now it may just be the clutch cable. Just do the clutch cable first. And if it doesn't clean up, that means we have to go into the transmission to fix that. Right. We do have a leak here. It's the oily for sure. If that seal's never been replaced, mm -hmm. then it's probably bad. If you look, there's no oil between that, that between the steel rusty block and the aluminum valve cover. Mm -hmm. So the valve covers are not leaking. Okay. So that's not gonna be the case here. That's the oil pan gasket right here. That is leaking. Right. So you do have a leaking oil pan gasket. Right. I wouldn't say you necessarily have to do that right now if you don't mind, you know, checking your oil every once in a while. If you look right here, you see that discoloration, more of a yellow and a white? Yep. That's from a coolant leak. Mm -hmm. That's a lot, that's a very small, long-term coolant leak. And it's just typical for a car that's, you know, yeah. the number one, it's been used or just sat mm -hmm. because honestly, time, is as hard or harder on cars and machines as the actual wear. The engine mount right. Oh, I see the little crack up there. there. Mm -hmm. That crack, oh, that's yeah. the rubber insulator, okay. okay? It's blown out. This is the side of the motor that picks up or torques up. Mm -hmm. This is the one that's always gonna go out first. So you really need engine mount. O2 sensors. These are original. I definitely mm -hmm. recommend placing those. You hear the word original a lot, Matt. I mean, I said I wanted an all original car. Oh, you got it. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe you didn't know what you're getting into. Because at this point, we're gonna do brakes, suspension, suspension and steering and then I think we're done. Okay. <laughs> Your struts are all original. Mm -hmm. Your springs are all original. If I remember correctly, you said you wanted to upgrade the Coney's, right? I did. Yeah. Oh, there we go. So I love mine. <laughs> I love my Coney yellows. Yeah, they're awesome. Your sway bar bushings mm -hmm. split. When they completely blow out, when you hit a bump, it's going to go bam, 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 yeah. bangs, right? Oh, it does, yes. Okay, so yeah, <laughs> She's like, yes, yes I know that. <laughs> this side, the seal that seals this shaft and the inner housing, it's leaking. See that fluid mm -hmm. coming out? That's power steering fluid that's leaking into here. So you do have bad tie rods. If you get a rack, it comes with the new inner, inner tie rods. You do need a rack. Oh yeah. yeah. Did you have that second of thinking, is my car gonna turn? Right, yes. Oh, okay, it yep. is. Uh, yeah, in either direction. The noise we're hearing is nothing loose under here. It's actually from a frozen wheel cylinder. Okay. And these shoes, I am pretty sure these are original Ford shoes. So these are probably factory from the car. It's the same thing on the other side. They're actually exactly the same thing on the other side. Front piston's free, the back piston's frozen. Okay. So your rear brakes are not working really at all. So we'll go to the front brakes. Somebody put pads on these brakes, that's all they did. Put brand new brake pads on, didn't machine the rotor, mm -hmm. and just use the new brake pads to clean the rust off. So that's not great. So the tail of that brake booster's bad, there's a diaphragm, rubber diaphragm in there. When it's bad, that diaphragm has a hole in it. The way to test that, start the car, hold the brakes to the floor. Shut the car off, keep mm -hmm. your foot on the brake. If mm -hmm. the brake starts pushing back up on you, mm -hmm. you have a leak in the diaphragm and you need a brake booster. Okay. You do not have that problem on this car. That's the part you really wanted to hear. Yeah. There you go. Right? That's, yeah. that's, that's what I was waiting that's for. That's the one good part. Today. Yeah, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> that pretty much covers everything. I went okay. through it pretty thoroughly. Wow. And you know what? I'd say so, right? Uh, yes, Didn't that he? was yeah. amazing, actually. <laughs> I, I thoroughly enjoyed that. And I was wrong. Didn't cover everything. Uh -oh. I pulled your computer out. Cracked open your computer. Yeah 
it is very quickly, if we don't repair it, it is very quickly going to leave you on the side of the road. It is on its way out. And then that's it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. All right, so all done. I'm not sure how long this video actually was. I know we've been doing this more than an hour now, guys. <laughs> so, Matt, you went through a lot of stuff wrong with the car, but what do you actually feel about the car? The car itself is in exceptional condition for its mileage and age. When I first looked at this car, I did not think it was a 100,000 mile car. It needs a lot of stuff, but this is all yeah. stuff that just comes with age and wear. Even so. if it had 50,000 miles, it's time would have done this too, right? Time would have done a lot of the same stuff. Yeah. Absolutely. But yeah, yeah just the pure like cleanliness of the car, the originality of it, it's it's a great car to start with. It has everything to do from either going back to stock or if she wants to modify. Everything's here. This is yeah. This is like an ideal car to start with. And so Victoria, how are you feeling now that he's done everything <laughs> wrong and roasted your car? <laughs> no, I thought it was awesome. I loved going through it. I loved hearing everything that you had to say and what you would replace and how you would do things. And this is aesthetic and this is pre maintenance and this, you know. So that made a lot of sense to me. And I love the car. I'm never going to get rid of the car. Does this make you love it more or less now? No, it makes me love it more because he thinks that it's, you know, fixable. A, good, a very good Well, you heard what point. he just said about yeah. it. Yeah. So, no, I, I love it. So, okay. I'm looking forward to it all being right and being able to drive it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. See, he keeps waiting for somebody to act like I did. When you said everything wrong with my car, I think I went in the corner and cried, Matt. But <laughs> pretty much. Yeah. That's just me. Everybody else, is, you make feel good. So. <laughs> and I just love that you got a convertible because I think, I think convertibles don't get enough love, honestly. They don't. I for agree. the Fox bodies. I agree. So. Cool. There you go, guys. Victoria's 93 Triple White Summer Edition car. Awesome car. And I think it's going to be a lot more awesome when she is done or when Matt gets done fixing everything on it. Very comprehensive today. I did not include everything he covered because he was very thorough and there's a lot of stuff in there. This is a service he's offering now, too. If you want to check out a car before you buy it, you can bring it over. Or he also will do this for your car as well. If you are local, you want to bring it in and uh, so you can contact Fox Resto, see what pricing is there on that. But that's going to do it for this one. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I think you kind of like these videos. I enjoy them too. If you did, please hit the like button. If you're stopping in for the first time, please subscribe because I do upload two times a week, every Sunday, and Wednesday. As Harris Lou says, hit the notification bell and uh, that's it. We'll see you here next time on GearHead 704. Right here, <laughs> Dr. Lily, go get it. There she goes. Yeah, yeah. all right. She, goes. she heard it. There you go, guys. Victoria's 93 feature car, summer car, summer feature car. What did I say? I guess it is. It's Triple both. White. <laughs> Triple white, he says. It's you, buddy, and me. We don't get tans, so we're, tri yeah. we're triple white. Oh, I think we both got farmer tans. Okay, that's true. Anyway, <laughs> okay.